Hey everyone, it's Claire. Welcome back to another Web Dev Wednesday. I know I missed last week. There, it was a whole ordeal. I ended up um, uploading just sort of a bonus video, um, which you'll see back in your feed. It's a Sims 4 speed build, so something a little bit different, but I kind of explained the situation there, and I talked about it on Twitter too, but we don't need to go over it again. We are back. We are back to our Web Dev videos every week. I am on top of it. I've, I think I figured out a new setup that I'm going to use, so we're in good shape. Anyway, like I promised, we are moving on from strict HTML to incorporating CSS. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Kind of self-explanatory in the style sheet, so she obviously it's a separate document. You can style in your HTML document, but it's a good practice to have a separate style sheet since they do tend to get a little bit long. And style says what it does. It affects the look and feel of your website. The way HTML does structure, CSS does style. And the cascade comes into play again as your sheets get longer. Um, styles that are incorporated later on in the cascade, cascade can override um, previous ones. So that's what we're talking about today. And before we get into our coding, I'm going to show you the anatomy of a CSS rule. So inside your cascading style sheet, you're going to have a bunch of rules like this. And your selector is the HTML element that you want to target. And you can also target by class or ID, which I'm also going to talk about. So you get a little bit of a bonus. And as we learn CSS, you're going to keep learning new HTML things to incorporate. But we do have the basics already, so we're ready. But anyway, your selector targets the part of your document you're going to style. And then curly brackets are the main structure of a CSS rule and within the curly brackets you're gonna put your rules and the best way to learn this is to practice so this is the just practice page I put together and you see it over here in the browser it's ugly like we're used to seeing and we are going to style it so here's the HTML I just have a heading a paragraph we're gonna style and a list since it'll be a good example of how to use class and ID and I already created a style sheet over here just make sure you have the dot CSS extension and it's empty but we're going to fill it don't worry um, and before I ins link the CSS document to our HTML I'm just going to show you the structure of our site here so as you can see this is our HTML document here we have a folder called styles and in there is the intro document so we're just going to put it in. Make sure you put the link to your CSS style sheet in the head of your document. Don't put it in the body. Don't put it above the head. It goes in the head and it's just a link. Is it href or is it source? Yeah, it's source. So we're going to put styles slash intro dot CSS in here. And the relationship is style sheet. And there's no closing tag to a link, it's a standalone. So we're going to save this, we refresh, nothing's different because this file that we are linking to is empty. So we're going to go in here, we're going to create our first CSS rule. And remember it's a selector and then curly brace. So for our selector, let's just select the paragraph element and then in the, bra in the curly braces, our rules, and there's a lot of um, CSS things that we can target and change. Um, and I'm not sure where to start with them, so we're just going to do basics like background color, text color, that sort of thing. Let's just make the background color of this paragraph something fun. Let's do coral. So it's what you are changing, a colon, and then what you're changing it to, and you end a rule with a semicolon. So that's it. This is a CSS rule. And you can also, you can do as many rules inside the brackets as you want it will apply to this selector so we can also do color is for the font color let's make it like beige <laughs> I guess that'll look nice with coral and we can change the font as well let's do like Arial and then this is a backup so if like the browser doesn't have Arial for some reason it'll default to a sans serif we'll save this if we refresh our browser now nothing happened because maybe it is href this is fun <laughs> alright we'll save that let's see styles intro CSS what's the problem uh, 
I don't understand. <gasps> ooh, ooh, here we go. Girl can't type. There we go. So it is href. And you gotta spell this right. <laughs> so here you can see the background to just the paragraph element changed to that coral color. The font is different. You can see this is a serif font. This is our Arial that we selected. Now let's try something else. I'm going to copy this because I want multiple paragraphs to work with. If we save this, you'll see there are more paragraphs and they are all targeted by that selector of P. But what if we give these elements a class of paragraph? Let's just do the first two with a class of paragraph. And a class is an attribute you give an HTML element that categorizes elements. So I'll also do IDs just because I think they're best to be talked about together. We're going to give this list item the ID of blue, this one the ID of pink, and this one the ID of black. So classes target groups of elements. It can be more than one on the page and it's typically you want to style them together, targeting them together. Whereas IDs are unique. There's only one element with this ID on the entire page. So now instead of targeting all paragraph elements, we're going to target just the class called paragraph. And the way we select a paragraph in CSS is just with the dot and then the name of the class. If we save this, you will see only the paragraphs with that class are targeted. And now let's do something down here with these list items. And same way you target a class with a dot, you target ID with the hashtag, the pound, the hash mark. So let's get our list item called blue, give it a background color of not just blue, let's do something fun. Let's do cadet blue, I love that color. Save this, and if we refresh, only this list item is targeted because that's the list item with the ID of blue. And we can do the same thing to the other list items. And actually, the same way that you can do multiple rules to one selector, you can select multiple elements. So let's make both of these have a background color of, let's find a pretty pink. Let's do... Ooh, dark magenta. I like it. So now as you can see, both of these elements are targeted. Let's see what happens if we replace the black with blue. See, the cascade comes into effect here because even though we targeted blue up here, later on we target it again and this rule overrides this one. But as it turns out, we don't want to target multiple elements. We're going to do them differently. This one we're going to give just a classic black, and because the background's going to be black, I'm going to give the font, give it a font color of white. And as you can see now, they are each targeted differently. And I'm going to leave it just at colors for now, now that you understand how CSS works and the different ways we can interact with our HTML page. Um, we'll be able to get more in depth with the different things that you can do with CSS in a later video. But anyway guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week. Um, and thank you for your patience last week. Hopefully we will be on track now with the computer situation and I'll be able to keep up better. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you next time.